check it out. See the cross up there. Ooh, told you it gets biblical up in here. And the dragon. You, you can see the dragon too. Biting through the tree. Two little eyes on top. Sweet as 12. And how you guys doing out there? Just sitting here finishing up and I'm gonna do this quick video and answer a few questions and blah blah blah. Uh first of all, oh I thought some Bible up in there too. Uh first of all, one of the questions was because I mentioned comments, I was like, yeah, man, we get so right? And he was like, yeah, email. And I was like, he doesn't believe me. So I was like, okay, I'll give you three ways that I find them. First of all, you can track their movements with the stars that are behind them or plants, whatever. Track their movements that way. You can also track their movements, you know, by the tail they leave. If you image your telescope right, you can capture the debris tail. And the third way you can do it with the naked eye is just look at the clouds and if there's a you know if there's a sparkle in the sky and it's leaving a trail through those clouds then you right because it's the debris field and if the comet's going through the debris field obviously it means it's pretty close and that's three ways I detect them so there's your question so that's just too much to write down so that's the way I detect them to you plus I get some hints here and there too on where to look so but uh, one skipped off our atmosphere so uh, there's six NASA that I got one skipped off the atmosphere in the upper Midwest so you know and got a brief glimpse at the stars and Took a few calculations. That's how you do it. So, but you see a dragon and the cross and everything. And, you know, so that's one of the questions. The side question is, is you know, it, the guys are saying, well, obviously, sorry about that. Obviously, You know, I must have these things calculated in order to keep capturing these images. And one person was telling me, well, that's impossible. I'm like, is it really? It's really impossible to calculate the orbit of these planetary objects? Right? It, it, you, yes, it is. NASA's got 20,000 people working on the problem right now. We get 1,400 satellites, you know, radio, infrared. Man, they got everything. And you, you got to understand, they working on the problem. I said in the last week, they got like five supercomputers working on the problem. They're just not telling you. So go out there and figure out what I figured out. Okay, and it ain't that hard. It's really not that hard, you know. But, again... We're listening to other people, and they're, like, coming up with all kinds of similar theories. And, you know, they really don't have any evidence to justify how they come to those conclusions. They really don't. They don't have video evidence. They don't have photographic evidence. They don't have data. You know, they don't have, you know... uh you know, observation readings, measurements, temperature, gauge. You, have you done any of that by, you know, have you done any of that yourself? Instead of just, you know, here's a new email I got and I'm going to bust it out for you. And that's, and you're getting this information, I don't know how. So we're just going to leave it at that. But yeah, the sun is actually low in the sky, so it technically wasn't a cross. But because of that, you know, the, the real good blue color comes out. 
and you know of course that's what I always video you know the big planet and then the dragon you know there it is again in front of you with the cross and there's all kinds of stuff in there and you know that's what makes it biblical for me and because I sort of have knowledge within the Bible you know you gotta understand a few things see the Bible specifically states that the United States is not Babylon we're not the Babylonians we are not the Bible specifically states that we America and maybe Canada because maybe Canada are what God calls the daughter of the Chaldeans. Now, if you don't know who the Chaldeans are in the Bible, well, you got to go back to square one because you got to understand, you know, God names these people for a reason. Chaldeans were the people to the north, you know, of Damascus. And, you know, God describes them as, you know, fair-minded people or, or something like that. I'm not completely sure on, on that. But he's talking about England and, and Europe, people in the north. Now, when he specifically says the daughter of the Chaldeans, we are the offspring of those people in the new land, which God actually specifically describes. God even specifically describes in the prophets of the Statue of Liberty. He describes how this land would be fruitful and plentiful. You know, he would describe how this land would be, you know, a beacon of the world. But also in Revelations, he also says this. I don't want y'all to think about this real closely. In Revelations, he says, a flash, oops, sorry, sorry about that. A flash will turn off the lights until the until the millennia I so choose. Now, prophets wrote this long time ago. Now, what do you think he's describing? A flash in the sky and then the lights don't go back on for as long as he said deems it necessary. How do the prophets prophesy that, you know, this could be a couple things that will turn off the lights for a very long time. One is a very powerful solar flare, which could happen after the sun cools down when Nibiru jets. Second, it could be a CME that finally is released because the extra gravity is weakening. It could be a buildup of it. Then it'll bust out. Could be back. Third way is an EMP attack. Now, the prophets didn't know nothing about any of these scenarios. You, you get me? But the last one, the attack, EMP, is how God specifically describes the war to end all wars, which will be started from a ruler from the north and a ruler from the south. Now, if you think about it, North and South Korea. Now, it could be biblical. It could not. I'm not saying nothing. But you must understand that these things correlate. It's not on accident. If you just read within the scriptures, the end time prophecies is actually one third of the Bible. And for most of you fools that don't know this, the acronym for Bible actually means basic instructions before leaving earth. Now, that's what you fellas need. And when I deem it in this kind of way, that's all right. Just to let you know that things correlate. These things are coming through. It's going to be 
sort of clear. We should get some good readings on the stars. You know, and then I'll be able to calculate their next pass. Because I need the stars to do that. And I don't think you fellas have done that. So we're going to do it like this. And we're going to end it on one of these type of notes that just, you know, got to say, hey, you know, this is how we rock. Ten years ago, a new species appeared on Earth. The great apes. They were our distant ancestors. Through evolution, they gave rise to new, more advanced species. They adventured far and wide and invented hunting, power, tools, love, and soon, war. Thanks to the latest scientific discoveries, we are about to take a journey into the depths of time to find out which of our ancestors took the decisive step and gave birth to the first man.